the Chizero mean. Theorem that says if a n converges to a, if this is and b sub n equals one over n summation of a sub i from i equals one to n then B sub n converges to A, the same limit. So that's got a very simple proof. The reason why it's true is this is like the integral of the A's. It's smoother. It's a running average of them. So if the elements converge, so should the running average. So that makes it plausible. Uh, but then we know that h of x1 through xn over n is equal to 1 over n summation of h of x i plus 1 over x super i previous from i equals, well, let's say, I'll make it x sub i, x sub i minus 1, and from i equals 1 to n. All right. Now we're done. If the process is stationary, then the limit of this is h prime, which we have shown, since this is monotonic decreasing, positive, uh, that this limit exists. And then by invoking this theorem that says the running average of these must equal to have the same limit as the limit of the terms in it, we get that this goes to h prime of x. The conditional novelty of the next term. But this now has a limit. But this limit we've defined as h of x, of the process x. So the limit of this is the limit of this, which is h prime. But the limit of this was what we were calling h. So they're the same notion. And now we have the fun fact that all st stationary stochastic processes have a linear growth in the sense that this over n tends to a limit. Uh, that's of interest because that means if you have twice as long a novel than War and Peace, It'll take you twice as many bits to describe it. And that the innovations will go at a constant rate in Mozart or in uh, literature or so on. Question? No. I can think, uh, let's have a process that takes on four values. So, and uh, so the distribution at each time is P1, P2, P3, P4, but the P vector is changing with time. So the entropy is staying constant. There's going to be IID, 
But you can tell time by inspection of the actual values of x because it's, um, it's not stationary. Great. That reminds me, I mean, just uh, David Blackwell, famous statistician, uh, died recently, and we're doing some memorial uh, conferences for him. And uh, one of his earliest theorems was on the strong law of large numbers. Uh, if the expected absolute value of a random variable is x, uh, is finite, then uh, the 1 over n summation, and they're independent, 1 over n summation of xi converges to the expected value with probability 1. He proved the converse, that if 1 over n summation of xi, where they're independent, converges to 1, uh, uh, converges to some value with probability 1, then that value is the expected value, and that expected value is finite. So it's just like your question. Let's take a one minute. Oh, yeah, you have a question, then we'll take a break. No, there are often some in initial terms because, look, the entropy of, say, the second term given the first, you have a lot less uh, information than the entropy of the millionth term given the previous 999,999. So, uh, so you won't, it won't be strictly linear. Uh, no. The question is, does it matter how fast it goes? Uh, of course, I, I immediately want to prove a theorem that says how fast it goes. <laughs> uh, but does it matter? Uh, I can't. I don't see it mattering right now. I mean, it's of interest. But I, I can't uh, can't give you a strong answer on that. All right, one minute break. Uh, actually, two minute break. Bring your homework set two up here. And I forgot to circulate these. So you might want to just pick them up up here. Here, it's the graded homeworks. Uh, it's the solutions, and it's the new homework assignment.
Okay, we're going to begin again. Here's the first application of what we've done. Entropy rate of Markov chain. with transition matrix P. And we notice that H of Xn, given the past, is the entropy of Xn, right, of stationary. Markov chain P. Xn, given Xn minus 1, which by stationarity is the entropy of X2, given X1. Now X1 takes on a value I, with probability mu sub I. And then the entropy of X2, given that it's in state I at time 1, is H of PI. So P is P1, PM. because that's the conditional entropy. And this is summed over I, so this becomes sum over mu I, excuse me, over I and J of the stationary probability associated with I times Pij log Pij. And that's summed over J. And now I put a minus sign out here because I have P log P instead of P log 1 over P. Okay. So this is the entropy rate of any finite state stationary Markov chain. You just have the transition matrix P, and you have this stationary probability mu that you get by solving mu equals mu p. And uh, you plug that in. So this is the expected value over i and j of log of pij. All right, so an example. Alpha, beta, which we looked at before, stationary distribution, beta over alpha plus beta, alpha over alpha plus beta, entropy rate. Well, it's the probability I'm in state one, beta over alpha plus beta times H of um, Well, I'm not going to write that out because uh, this is H of, um, what's my transition? Uh, H of alpha plus alpha over alpha plus beta. H of beta. So you can do that for any Markov chain. Now for some fun. There's one Markov chain that's really nice and unexpectedly nice. Yes? We're assuming that the chain starts in mu? Yeah, uh, it doesn't start, yeah, yeah. The initial state is drawn according to the distribution mu. That's what makes it a stationary Markov chain. So that's what is stationary. Yeah, 
Well, for Markov chains, you know, if it's an irreducible Markov chain, 